Hey Steve here and in this video I'm showing you three powerful tips for using the Photoshop Curves adjustment layer. Now make sure you watch until the end because even though the first two tips are really cool, the third technique that I'm going to show you really will allow you to do some pretty awesome things. So if you like this video let me know by giving it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. Just remember to hit that little bell notification icon so that YouTube notifies you each time I publish a new video. And also let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions for things that I can show you in a future video. For now though, let's get started with tip number one. Now tip number one has to do with the auto curves button. So let me just add a curves adjustment layer here to this example image. So we've got an auto button here in the curves properties. And when you click it, it's basically just gonna give you an auto contrast curve. Uh, so it's gonna basically just try to brighten the highlights, darken the shadows. And you know, most of the time it's a bit too strong and you know, I don't really use this. Uh, however, you may have just seen a sneak preview of what I'm about to tell you here uh, when I ho hovered over the uh, auto button. But let me just do that again. So you'll see that little tooltip popped up. It says automatically correct curves. That's what the auto button does. And then it says use opt for options. So I'm on a Mac, so that's the option key on the keyboard. If you're on a PC, you can hold Alt. And then holding that key on the keyboard and clicking the Auto button, we get this whole new dialog box pop up that gives us all these different options for a different type of auto curves adjustment. So each of these, if you hover over them, it's gonna give you a little tool tip to tell you exactly what it's doing. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail about what each of these uh, different options are. Um, save to just click on each one of them now just to sort of show you roughly. Um, so enhance monochromatic contrast, we've got this enhance per channel contrast, find dark and light colors, and then enhance brightness and contrast. This is the original. Uh, for the first three, you've got these other options here, so you can check a box here, um, and you can set clipping values. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I would just recommend uh, trying this and experimenting. So if you're thinking to use the auto curves button, then, uh, you know, and it doesn't give you really much to go on in the default S curve, then remember you've also got this extra set of options that you can open using the Alt or Option key on the keyboard. So give that a go, have a little experimentation and see where it takes you. So that brings me on now to tip number two. So let me just reset this curves adjustment now. And tip number two is quite a simple one, um, but it does help to sort of allow you to visualize what parts of the image fall on what parts of the curve. So here we've got this little finger button that I can just turn on. So it's a finger with an up and down arrow. And just keep your eye on the curve here while I move the mouse around the image. And you'll see as I move around, as I move the mouse to a brighter part of the image, this little dot sort of goes up towards the top of the curve. And as I go to a darker part of the image, it sort of starts hovering around the bottom end. And so that's telling me that, you know, wherever the mouse is at that time, uh, you yeah, know, that's corresponding on the curve with the tonal range of that area that I'm mousing over. So that's pretty cool just sort of visually to help you sort of get your head around what's going to change when you, you know, if you decide to push a curve up or, or down or whatever. Uh, but yeah, what this actually allows you to do is just do that straight away just by clicking and dragging in the image. So you can click and drag up to move the curve up at that point that I'm clicking on the image and you can move it down and so on. So you can create a whole bunch of different points within the image and you know it really does kind of give you quite a lot of control and again it's just another cool way uh, to help you visualize what you're brightening and what you're darkening when you create your curve adjustment so i did promise that number three would be really awesome so the uh, the first two hopefully you get some value out of those but the third thing that i want to show you today this third tip so let me just demonstrate it before I try to over explain things. It's probably going to be uh, a lot easier to show rather than tell and then show. Uh, so, okay, 
when we double click on the curves adjustment layer, we get the curves properties panel. And this is the default view that's going to pop up every time. Now, what you may not know is that at the top here, this is actually a toggle between two different views. So you've got the curves settings. And if we click this one here, that's going to give us the layer mask settings. Now, once I've clicked on that, we've got these options that are grayed out. To activate them, I need to actually just click on the layer mask itself. So from here, the cool thing that I want to show you is this color range button here. So what that's going to allow us to do, if I click on the color range button, it's going to bring up the color range uh, filter or tool or whatever you call it. Now from here, let's say for example, I want to uh, use the curves adjustment to enhance the nice sort of red warm tones in the clouds. Well, what I would do is just click on a part of the image that is that color that I want to adjust. And we'll see in the little preview here, kind of how much of that image is uh, being included in this selection. So, you know, most of the warm colors, the sort of, um, you know, the yellows and the reds, Obviously we're getting a bit of the blues in there, but we can really sort of, we can narrow that down by changing the fuzziness. Um, I wouldn't have it too low on the fuzziness, otherwise it's going to be a bit weird. Uh, you know, the transition between the colors is going to look a bit funky. So um, yeah, I would keep it sort of, keep it so there's not like perfectly isolating the one color that you want to adjust, but um, yeah, experiment around with it if it's not giving you the exact thing that you expect. Uh, and then, okay, so we've essentially selected the warm colors. I'm going to click OK. And now if you look down here in the layer mask of this curves adjustment, we can see that the, uh, the layer mask is showing us that same selection that we just made in the color range picker or the color range tool. Now, with that in place, what we can do is say, okay, let's increase the warmth in that tonal range of the image. So, or at least in the areas where that layer mask is going to allow it to show through. So I'm going to grab the red channel and I'm just going to push the curve up and we'll see there, I'm going to push that further than I normally would just so that it comes across in the video. But we can see here now, the, uh, the warm clouds are getting more red the further I push this curve up, but the rest of the image is staying the original color because that's exactly what the, uh, what the layer mask is allowing thanks to that color range uh, tool that created that layer mask. So let's uh, see if we can, well, <laughs> I'm creating some really ugly colors here, but you get the idea. This is how you would go about it. Maybe I'll just pull the red down a bit. So yeah, that's probably a nice subtle effect there. Um, and yeah, you know, if you want to do the same thing now, say for example, on the grass, what you'd actually have to do is create a second adjustment. So let's add that second curves layer. Um, I've got the uh, layer mask selected and now that's actually loaded the, uh, the masks option panel. And again, let's click color range. This time I'm going to click the foreground. So that's going to select the greens. We can see roughly what it's selected in the little preview window there. Click OK. And now let's make the green grass even more green. So this is going to be a bit leery, but you know, just to kind of show you the idea. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let's toggle that off and on and we can see the effect that's had. Now let's just add one more for good luck. Let us select the blue sky. Okay, so here I'm gonna to want to increase the fuzziness just so that it's not gonna create any lines in between the sky, uh, in between the two colors in the sky. Uh, okay, so now let's make this a bit more blue. And there we go. So just to recap, tip number three is in the properties panel of your adjustment layer, if you toggle across to the masks and then use the color range uh, option, 
then what that allows you to do is quickly and easily select a color within the image and then create a layer mask that is isolating that specific color. So similar to luminosity masking, whereas luminosity masking is going to be isolating based on the brightness of the image, here you can create a layer mask based on the colors. So there we go. That is the three tips I wanted to show you today for the curves adjustment layer. Hopefully you found them useful. And uh, yeah, if you did, then give us a like, just hit that thumbs up button and remember to subscribe to my channel for more. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.